Foods, and I'm excited to come to you to make a check glass memory wire bracelet today. Memory wire is definitely one of my favorite jewelry making techniques. It's super fun, it's very easy, it's like instant gratification. So it's a lot of fun to make. So we're gonna be making memory wire combined with check glass, and then we're gonna add a little nun design charm to finish it off. So it's a really fun project, it's a great one that you can give as a gift because it's really one size fits all. So you don't have to worry about sizing or wrist size with this one so much. Um, so we're gonna be using a nice medium size memory wire, which is a good standard size. So thank you though for joining me. I am excited, I saw a couple hearts pop up already. Thank you, if you tap the little like button, it shows me little floaty hearts, which is really fun for me to see. And then this is great because it's live. So you get to talk with me and ask questions and it's really fun. It's a great way of just being able to share and to be part of something. So feel free to comment. I would love to hear what your Thanksgiving plans are. We're a couple days away from Thanksgiving. My husband actually went and got the chocolate pecan pie from the bakery this morning. I was wanting it yesterday, but they were all sold out for yesterday's time slot. So we have this pecan pie that we are resisting eating and is sitting in my kitchen right now. Um, so, but comment to ask questions about what I'm doing, ask questions um, just about anything you want. This is live and we get to talk and interact. So hi, Becky. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I've had this forever. Thank you. I like this sweater too. Um, so yeah, so just like Becky commented and I could see it right away, do comment. Now, if you are watching this on Facebook or a different platform, it's still live, still comment, but I can't actually see your comments. So if you want me to be able to see your comments, like I just did with Becky's, hop on over to artbeats.com forward slash live, and then I can actually see your comments during this live show, which is fun. So that is really easy to do. There's a link in the description of the video over on Facebook. You can just click on that link. It'll take you right over here. It's the same video, but you'll be able to interact a little bit more. Oh, yes, I that chocolate pecan pie, Eric, is going to be gone in like 10 minutes. I don't think it's going to even last, I don't know, it'll last maybe a half hour. It's from our favorite French bakery here in town, and we look forward to it every single year. Um, so yeah, tell me what your dessert's going to be. I would love to hear what everyone has for their dessert for Thanksgiving since it's just two days away. So again, thank you for joining me here. I am going to be making a check glass memory wire bracelet and we are going to go ahead and start to make that right now. So I'm gonna flip my camera around so you'll still hear me talking and we're just gonna flip the camera and we're gonna to start to make this. So here we go. And there's my living room. All right, here's my table. Now there's a lot of different products on this table. And if you wanna know more about any of them, you're going to see a little shopping bag icon on your screen. Click on it and it'll show you details for everything you see here. You're also going to see little images pop up, little product banners as I'm talking about the different items that I'm using. You can click on them and it will go ahead and take you to the product page with more details like size and shape and then you can add it to your shopping cart right from there too and you'll never lose me. I'll still be talking, you'll still see the video, I'll just shrink down and when you want to come back to the full size video, just click on me again. So here we go. Hi, Devin. Oh, vegan chocolate cake and pumpkin pie. Oh, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. I want to get some pumpkin pie too. I feel like it's not Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. So maybe I'll just skip the main course and just have pies. That sounds delightful. Okay, let's look at what we have here because we're going to be doing a memory wire check glass bracelet. So first off, the memory wire. Here is the memory wire that I'm using. You get 12 coils in each of these packs. So what's nice about that is you can make multiple bracelets out of a single pack. Now, you could do one that was 12, but it'd be quite thick. So like right here, I have some left over and I've already made two or three bracelets out of this. And this is what I have left over. So I'm just gonna be using this. So you never toss your scraps. You can make multiple bracelets out of just a single pack. And when I start these, I never know how long they're going to be. Like, I don't know how many loops I'm going to make. I just go based on the design and what looks right. So I'm going to be using this. A quick note is you do need memory wire cutters. I have a pair right here. 
Do not use your regular cutters on these. It will destroy them on the memory wire. It will create like a little notch in most cutters because memory wire is very strong. Um, it's a very sturdy wire. And so you wanna use memory wire cutters. I have a Zuron pair right here that I really like. They're very easy to use. So that's what I'm gonna be using to cut my memory wire. To finish my memory wire, since we're still talking about memory wire, Oh, Judy, Texas trash pie. Okay, you have to tell me what is in that because I am very curious now. Um, that sounds amazing. I am going to go ahead and finish my memory wire with round nose pliers. I have a couple pairs of chain nose pliers handy to open my jump ring to add my charm. And that's it for tools. So you just need something to finish your ends, cut the memory wire, and if you wanna add a charm, you're going to have some chain nose pliers. Now, you can use whatever beads you want. I took a selection of really pretty, well, I think they're really pretty, kind of gem tony, very rich colors, almost. If you saw my last video, um, I really like kind of like Renaissance colors, things that are just really luxurious and rich. And I thought that these had a slight holiday feel to them, but it wasn't overly Christmas. So it was like, oh, I could wear this for the holidays because I am doing kind of bronze and gold and red, but it's not overly Christmas that I couldn't wear it year round too. Now I am gonna think about adding some green to it too because it does feel Christmassy. And then I'm gonna add some gold. Now I wanted to show you the gold. I have some seed beads. So I have two seed beads that are very similar. I have a one right here, which is a golden fleece, and then I have a starlight. So you see one has a little bit, this is a starlight, it has a little bit of a shinier, brighter gold, and this is a little bit more of an antique gold. I'm gonna, I think I'll use the antique gold to go with kind of the bronze that I have here. So we're gonna have fun cutting up all these strands and playing. And then I'm gonna finish it with Nun Design Charms. And I have a couple little Nun Design Charms right here. And I think that'll be a really pretty way of finishing it. Again, it's kind of fancy, it's very lush, but it is not so like saying I'm a Christmas thing. It's not a Santa hat or a Christmas tree. All right, so those are all of our supplies. So here we go. Okay, let's cut them open and start working. I'm gonna see actually if I can get the, here we go. I'm just gonna make sure this camera is angled well so that we can see what we're doing. Okay, so let's cut these open and start playing. So I'm gonna get some seed beads out. And then I took these two. These are really cool. These are 6-0 Matubos, and they've got these nice cuts in them. So if you can see them, they're really pretty. Okay, so we're gonna cut those guys out too. I'm gonna pull out some of the green. A quick and easy way of opening up your tubes is to take a chain nose plier and pull the lid off. I actually had someone in our community tell me that and that was a great tip. I've been doing it ever since. So if you have any tips or tricks, please share them. We all love to learn from each other. Okay. So I'm just, this is the fun part where I'm just opening up all the different beads I think I might use and letting them spill out. And the, a lot of these beads are by Raven's Journey, which is just a wonderful company that makes the prettiest check glass beads. Yeah, Devin, I totally agree. The three cut shape on these is so neat. So if we can see that, maybe if I put a couple in my hand, it might be a little bit easier to see the different angles. You can see that the red is shining through. So it has like a darker outer coat. And then on the cuts, you see this like peekaboo red, which is really neat. Okay. And this is so fun because we just get to play. Okay, so I'm gonna use some of my, what I'm calling my leftover memory wire. And I'm gonna finish one end to begin with, which is gonna act as my stopper. So I'm just gonna uncoil it like so. And you see it bounces back and it holds its shape. And now I'm just gonna take my round nose and I'm gonna grab the tip. 
So if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just grabbing the tip between my pliers and I'm gonna rotate. And see, I've already started to make a little curve there. And I'm just gonna keep rotating. Oh, sure, uh, Michelle, as soon as I'm done with this, I will definitely repeat the tip for opening the tubes. It's a great one, because I struggled with it and I used to spill my tubes a lot. And like I said, some great person in our community shared it. Okay, so there is the end for our memory wire bracelet. So it's just a little loop, which is gonna allow us to connect charms to it. All right, so the tip was, and I think this is so great, is sometimes it's really hard to pull the lid off of these tubes. So what I do, and now I learned this from, like I said, someone else in our community, you just grab it with your chain nose plier and pull. And it just comes right off and you don't actually spill the beads and you're not struggling with it. So I think that's a great tip and something I use daily. All right, we've got all our pretty beads. Look at this, they're so pretty. Okay, so now we've got an end for our bracelet. So you're gonna just go ahead and find the other end of the memory wire and you don't pre-cut it because I don't know how long I want this to be. So I'm playing, I'm experimenting, but I don't know right now how long. So I'm just gonna start to add some beads. You can do it in a pattern, you can do color blocking, you can just do it randomly. So let's just start to add some and see what happens and see what we get. I know my brain usually works where I like to do a pattern, but sometimes it's really fun just to do random too. And a tip when you're doing memory wire bracelets is to alternate the shape as well as the color to really add some extra interest. So we've got some big Eidos. This is an Eido bead. And as I'm working with these, remember that the product images are gonna go ahead and pop up on your screen here. All you have to do is click on them and it'll take you to the full description. And then you can add it to your shopping cart right there too. And I do never go away. So you're not gonna miss any of this. This tutorial that is also going to be recorded. So if you do have to step away or you miss anything, you can come back to artbeads.com forward slash live. All of our videos are saved right there. So you could even get the supplies and order them and then rewatch the video to make it with me. Okay, let's keep adding some more beads because this is the fun part. I think I'm just gonna do random today. I don't think I'm gonna do a pattern. I think there's so many pretty beads here that it's just really nice to just add the ones that just look pretty together, whatever we want. I think I will add a little green. It is again, that little hint of Christmas because we do have the gold and the red and the green, which we always do tend to think of as Christmas, but you are not limited to Christmas. Let's add one of our big ones too now. Okay, so let's one of these beautiful ones right here. So when you've got some beads on, what you can do, is so you kind of stretch out your memory wire. And this is a part my kids like to look at because it's almost like a marble run. You shake them down and then they just end up down there. And then that little loop you made to begin with is stopping them. So it's preventing them from going any further or coming off. Now, if you do make a mistake and you get all the way to the end and there's something you don't like right here, could cut off that little loop and make a new loop. Um, so that is an option, but that is your stopper right there. All right, I'm just gonna keep adding more random beads and kind of just look as you're going and see how you like it. This is also a great project if you have some leftover beads like you saw, like um, my tubes of seed beads were not full. They had been used in a bunch of other projects. So sometimes you look at this, and you're like, well, what am I gonna do with that many beads are left? Well, you can use it for memory wire because it's a great application where you just want a bunch of different colors, you want different shapes, sizes, or if you have like a little jar at home where you keep a lot of your bead, leftover beads, it's a great option for using it as with um, memory wire. Okay, let's see, and I'm just gonna keep beading. Okay, here we go. So like I said before, this could be a really good gift idea. I would love to know who out there is making jewelry for gifts this year. Who's gonna give it and who are you, who are you gonna give it to? Are you giving it to 
your sister, your mom, who, who are you making the Christmas gifts for this year? All right. So I wanna also emphasize that this is really about playing. This is just having fun playing. You're not concentrating on your tension or your stitches being perfect. You're just having fun adding beads, which is, you know, just the pure joy of beading. Oh, Barb, you're using mason jars for your bead soup. Do you have more than one? Because I think that would be beautiful, like lined up on a countertop. Or where do you store them? Because I feel like they should be on display if you have a beautiful mason jar filled with beads. Okay, shake down. Keep going. Okay, so a good thing to do as you're doing this is just kind of check how it's looking. And you, for for me personally, there is no right or wrong way to do this, but I like to have the like the nice bigger focal beads spaced periodically so I don't go too far without like a nice big bead. So maybe I'll add another one right now. Ah, oh, you fill one and start another. How many do you have at this type time, Barb? Oh, Colette, that's nice that you're making malas for friends. I'm sure they will love that. That's very special. Ah, oh, Barbie, keep it on the bookshelf. Yeah, I think I would too. I think that's a great spot for them. You know what would be fun is if we could all share pictures of where we keep our extra beads. Like if we do display them in a fun way like that with mason jars, it'd be fun to see like a gallery of how everyone keeps their their bead soups and their mixes and how we, you know, still enjoy just the beauty of the beads, even when we're not beading with them. Because they are really pretty. Okay. Okay, I'm going to shake it down again. Okay, so let's see. I think we're a little bit more than one loop. We're just at about one loop. So this is what it looks like so far. And you can decide how many loops you want. I'm probably going to do about two. I think this is going to be a two loop one. So I'm about half done on this one. Okay. Now, a nice thing too is if you do keep them to like two loops each out of one memory wire packet, you're going to get six bracelets, which is really nice. Or six gifts. That's a great way if you factor that. And then you'll keep your leftover beads too. And then they'll become part of your bead soup. Or you can make multiples out of these different beads, multiple bracelets, especially if you've got the tubes. The tubes have so many beads in them that you're going to be able to get a lot of bracelets made out of them. So I cannot believe that Thanksgiving is in two days. This year flew by. It just flew by. I was I almost forgot to order that pie. And then my boys, I've got two boys, and my boys are enjoying Thanksgiving break right now, and they have been dying to decorate for Christmas, but I keep telling them we're going to be waiting until the day after Thanksgiving to put up the Christmas decorations, because for me, that's tradition, is wait till the day after Christmas, and then the Christmas tree comes out, and the ornaments, and all of that fun stuff, so... I'm very much looking forward to not only Thanksgiving, but the day after, because that's when everything becomes Christmassy. Although I have started playing Christmas music already. Oh, Devin, you have the same tradition of the day after Christmas for decorations. I love that. It makes it really special. It's so much to look forward to. So Pat, how do you map out a pattern? So if I was not doing this randomly and I was doing a pattern, what I would do, and this is what I, I tend to do, is I would put on 
you can either do a couple things. You can lay out a pattern of beads on your table. So I'll take a little break here to show you. You could lay out a pattern of beads to kind of get an idea of what it might look like. So maybe it's, you know, five or six beads and you kind of see how you like the shapes looking and then you would just repeat. So you would just do the same six beads on repeat. What I tend to do is I would put those beads onto my memory wire bracelet, circle them on down and see how they look. So let's say this was my pattern right here, these first ones. And then you would just repeat. And I sometimes play around with it a bit. It's really about just what looks good when they're put together um, and you actually see them on the bracelet. And then I would just repeat. Now you could do color blocking. I love color blocking with memory wire bracelets where you're doing like a sequence. So maybe we're doing five of these nice big um, eight millimeter bronze check glass beads. And then we're gonna do three or four of these other pretty Raven's Journey beads. And you just get these nice blocks of color so that's a really fun thing to do with memory wire bracelets too, is where you get this like um, almost more of a modern look to it because you are doing the color blocking. And it's great too if you're using even like seed beads, you can do some wonderful color blocking with seed beads. Oh, thank you, Lucy. I These are my favorite colors. These, I don't know, this reminds me of like Renaissance or Paris in the 1920s. I don't know. I just, I think these colors are so lush. I'm glad you like them too. All right, we're gonna keep beating here. And like I said, I'm gonna try to do two, two loops for this one because memory wire bracelets can be really wide and thick. You can do four, five loops, six loops, whatever you like, but you can also keep them to just a couple. Here we go. We're gonna shuffle these guys down. All right, we're almost there. This is how it's looking, guys. So if you see what we've got so far, yes, definitely an antique holiday, for sure, for sure. I remember um, we used to get a catalog growing up called a Victorian, I think it was a Victorian Christmas, and I loved looking at it. It had so many beautiful ideas for how to decorate for the holidays in like a Victorian style. So that was always something I looked forward to getting every single Christmas. Yes, and Pat, um, this does work with most all sizes of wrists. When I go ahead and I put it on at the very end, I'll show you how it loops. You can get memory wire in different sizes. So if you do know that whoever you're giving it to, it has a particularly small wrist or a particularly large wrist, it does come in different sizes. This is the medium, which tends to fit most people. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I'm glad that you're enjoying these. I know that we're really enjoying them too. I think I can speak for Becky too, because I was talking to her this morning and I know she's having so much fun with these too. So I'm glad to hear that you are as well. Oh, Devin, yes, you could definitely do Morse code here with um, the memory wire bracelets. Absolutely, because Morse code is where you have like chunks of beads where it represents letters and then little spaces in between. So you could absolutely do a Morse code memory wire bracelet. That's a great idea. Oh, Barb, that's so nice. So Barb is saying that she's making three strand memory wire bracelets and lots of colors and earrings for um, Arizona's Helping Hands Foster Kids Support Organization. That is amazing. I love that. That is a great way of bringing some joy and helping the community. That's, some, that's really great. We have a, a local um, food bank not far from our house. And I know that we plan to take our kids to the grocery store and, and have them pick out a bunch of food. That's part of our tradition too is um, 
donating um, and then having the kids participate in it where they get to pick out what they think um, people would like or, or what people need. Wow, Barbie, you have 50 bracelets, earrings made. That's so many. That's a wonderful thing you're doing. Okay, we are almost done, guys. So we've almost made it twice around. And you can see what it looks like. So all these vintage -y colors. Yeah, Lucy, it's definitely vintage. I love the vintage too. Okay, I'm just gonna add a couple more beads and then we're gonna call this one done. Let's see. So shake them all down. Now when you get towards the end and you're about ready to finish it off, you want to make sure that all your beads are fully down to this end. I have sometimes finished it accidentally where I've had a gap here and then I've had to, had to work with it. Um, uh, Colette, do we have good resources for gemstone beads? We do. We have a ton of beautiful gemstone beads. Um, a lot of them are by Dakota Stones. They're beautiful quality. And if you click on any of them, they will give a lot more information about them. But you can also always ask questions too. And we've got a great customer service team. So if you have any questions about them, you can definitely reach out to them as well. But um we do have some beautiful gemstone beads and a lot of good information on the gemstone beads as well. All right, we have our bracelet. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off now. So what you do when you finish it off is you take your memory wire cutters and we're gonna cut, so it's between a fourth and a half of an inch. So if you could kind of look here Oh, thank you for the hearts. When you guys tap the little like button, I see little floaty hearts. So it's really nice to know that you're liking it. And don't forget, there is like a little shopping cart icon. If you click on that, you'll see all the supplies all at once for what I'm making here. And then there's also a little arrow button that you can share. So if you want to share with your friends this project, you can click that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this. Oh, thank you for all the hearts, guys. So nice to see. Okay, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna hold these beads back so they don't fall off. Okay, just cut off. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers again. All right, and we're just gonna grab this. You see that tip is right there? Okay, and we're gonna rotate and we're gonna keep rotating until we make a nice loop. So we see we got a little loop. Yeah, I'm having so much fun with these lives. I'm glad you guys are too. It's nice to hear. It's fun to, to be able to bead with someone. It's nice. It's always fun when you get to do it with a friend. Okay, so this is my memory wire bracelet. It is two loops. And then the way you get it is you just put it on your wrist, like so. And it stays on there and it keeps its shape. So it's really nice that it, it holds its shape it doesn't fall off, so you don't have to worry about a clasp, which is also a good thing if you perhaps are giving a gift for someone who struggles with clasps. Um, like I know my mom, she has a hard time working with clasps, and she also has a hard time um, getting like necklace clasps on. So memory wire bracelets are perfect for her, and then I do long necklaces that she doesn't have to you know, fiddle with a clasp for. So that's another thing to keep in mind if you do have a loved one who maybe is a struggles with trying to get things on and off. Memory wire bracelets are great because they're so easy and they don't have a clasp. Okay, we're almost done. We're gonna add our little charms. So I pulled some Nun Design charms. I love Nun Design. So I have a little lotus and then I've got this little drop. It's like a faceted little metal drop. So. Here we go. And so I don't know if I wanna do two drops or a lotus and a drop. I will probably do a lotus and a drop. So we're gonna open some jump rings. Oh yeah, Lucy, a magnetic clasp for people who are a little bit older is a great idea too. Yeah, it's important to keep those things in mind, especially if you're giving a gift because you want people to be able to enjoy it and you want it to be something that they can easily easily get on, especially if they have some struggles. Okay, so here we go. We got this jump ring. 
We're just gonna open it up. Sorry, I feel like my table's a little cluttered here. There we go. Now we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So I'm just going to take that jump ring, link it onto my charm, and then you've already got this loop ready to go. And so you just link it on to the little loop right there and close it on up. Okay, so now we've got one charm on there. And this is where you can really personalize a bracelet. There are, um, you know, so many different charms available at artbeads.com. And you can pick one that maybe is something meaningful to whomever is your recipient. So maybe it's, um, you know, they love gardening. So you pick flowers or music or who knows what it is, but you can pick a charm that is personal for them and then personalize your bracelet that way. All right, and then on the bottom one, we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna add a little charm. Close it on up, and we're done. And we finished our bracelet. So this is what it looks like. There we go. So we have a memory wire bracelet made with check glass beads. And then we have a couple little charms and these are fire polish, these are Raven's Journey, different shapes, different sizes. And if you look, we have so many beads left over. Here, let me pull all of these together. So you got all these beads left over. And then if you had opened up one of these packs and you had started with the full 12 loops, you would have 10 more loops remaining so you can make a bunch more bracelets and add all those wonderful bead soup mixes in as well. So thank you for joining me. I'm gonna flip the camera back up since we've made our project and then we could talk just a few more minutes before I sign off. Here we go. I'm gonna flip it back up really quick. All right, hi guys. Thank you for joining me. Let me pull this out again so you can see it. Here's our bracelet. So great little idea for gifts or making for yourself if you want to give yourself a little treat as well. Thank you. Again, this is going to be um, saved. So you could go to artbeads.com forward slash live and you can rewatch it or you can hit that, hit that little arrow button and share it with a friend. If you want to show them this project, maybe it's something you want to do with friends. You want to have a beading party. So share this with them. See if they want to get some beads. Maybe you guys all bring um, your beads together and you just have a fun beading party over some hot cocoa. Oh, thank you, Pat. Thank you, Devin. You guys, thank you. This was really fun. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy that Texas trash pie, the pumpkin pie, the pecan pie. Have a great job, or have, not job, <laughs> have a great day. Have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. And I love it that I can read your comments. Thank you, Michelle. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Have a great time, everyone. I'll see you next week. I'll see you on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And we're gonna make some little um, Christmas charm earrings. So stay tuned for that. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday. Bye, everyone.